It is exciting times in the photo editing world and with Luminar Neo's latest release, Gen Swap, things have just gone up a notch. This is the second generative AI tool released for Luminar Neo and in my opinion, the much more exciting one. So the first one was Generate and that was just designed to get rid of objects that we don't want from our scene. So for example, if you didn't want someone wearing glasses, you'd just get rid of them. But if you want to add things, you weren't actually able to do that. But with Gen Swap, the great thing is we can actually add elements into our scene. So for example, let's say you wanted to add a hat to somebody, you can just do that. Or if you're not happy with the hat they're already wearing, no problem, just change it out. It's far too hot to be wearing a hat right now. So I've been playing around with this tool for several hours now, and I wanna share with you my findings. Very interesting, some good, some bad. We're gonna take a look together. Let's dive into it. You can see over on the right hand side here that we have the Gen Swap tool and whichever photo is selected when we click on that, that's going to open up the tool relative to that photo. So we can work on this one here and it's going to be a good example just to show you the tool at its most basic level. So what we can do is actually mask the area that we'd like to introduce an object into and then we have this text prompt area here that asks us what do you envisage here? And once we're happy with that, we just click swap. It's as simple as that. As with any generative tool, it takes a while for the result to come back because it's not being calculated on our machine. It's being calculated on external servers. And there you go. We've got an AI generated moon inside our photo that the silhouette is framing. It's not the most amazing representation of a moon you're ever gonna see, but if you're not happy with the result you get, it's quite simple just to regenerate that option. So you just click the swap button down here and Luminar Neo is gonna send that photo off to the cloud, get you an alternative version for the swapped out pixels and give you back another option. Now, if you preferred the version that was there before, we're able just to hop back in history and we can come to the version before or alternatively, we can go right back to the beginning before we generated anything. Let's say we like this first version that was created and we want to save it. We've got our save option up here and then Luminar Neo just puts that photo inside the generative creations folder. Let's take a look at a more complicated request. I saw this photo of this weak guy enjoying birthday cake and I thought, oh, he really needs to have some people around him. So in the text prompt, I wrote group of children celebrating a birthday party. I then painted a mask around the character here, making sure that I bled over the edge of his hair, body, hat as well. Then hit swap and I was met with some very strange faces looking back at me. On one hand, it's very impressive how it's put three people in. We've got matching colors, they're kids, they've got party hats on as well, but their faces are just not quite right, are they? I mean, look at this girl's mouth here. What's going on there? I think this guy's quite right to be looking a little disgruntled. But then to try and fix it, rather than recalculating these people, what I thought I'd do is actually mask them off individually. So I came in and masked this girl's face here and regenerated her face. I've done the same for this kid here. This one looks much better on the right, but this girl, smiling girl, was my prompt. She looks a little demonic in the background there, so I was not happy with that result. So I changed my prompt to girl cheering and I got a better result. Here we go, I think that looks much better. I used the same prompt on the girl on the left hand side and got this. She looks like she's screaming, not cheering. I actually quite liked that expression and thought it was quite funny and played into the fact that this guy's party is doesn't look very impressed at all. From there, I thought I'd play around and get a different expression on this boy here. So my prompt was child sticking their tongue out. I got a very odd result indeed. I tried to regenerate it. It went from bad to worse. I'm not sure what's going on with this very red looking tongue here. So then I selected the mouth and thought, okay, let's go again. And this time, based on what I've selected here, Luminar Neo actually thought I was trying to generate something that was not PG. Let's have a look. Looks like the generated content is inappropriate. Adjust your mask and try again. Now, I'll just leave it to your imagination what the AI assumed was going on there that was inappropriate. So I just remasked it and went again. So I changed my mask to go over the whole face this time, hit swap again. <laughs> And this time I got something, uh, I, I can't even put words to that. I'm not sure what is going on there, but I quickly masked again and moved on from that fast as I could. I reselected that area, generated another version, this time using the prompt, young boy at a party sticking tongue out. 
No, where did I say turned away, facing the wall? I'm really not sure what was going on there. So I tried a completely different prompt, which was young boy pulling a face. And watch what we get this time. This opens up an interesting point. Sure enough, we get a boy pulling a face at us, but look what's going on underneath his chin here. And this is actually really interesting because we've got this kind of hole underneath his mouth. And that rather odd result got me thinking, well, how will I fix that? Do I need to open up Generaze to actually take away that hole and it will put in what it thinks should be a chin? And then I got thinking, well, why don't I just leave the prompt bare, select that area and see if it repairs it for me. And sure enough, by putting a dot over his chin, leaving that bare, it was able to fix his chin as if I'd used Generaze. So the really cool inadvertent side effect of that is rather than having to save a result and reopen a separate tool, so from going from gen swap to gen arrays, we can keep working inside gen swap and actually leave the command blocks blank. And that way gen swap actually starts to act for us as if it is gen arrays and just populates what it thinks should be there without us actually saying, put a chin on this boy. So I'm not sure if that's intentional from the developers or whether it's a little bit of a hack workaround, but in any case, that's quite a useful thing to bear in mind. So if we just quickly zoom in, you can see the repair job that it's done on his chin. That's actually a really good result. Okay, so the next thing I actually thought of doing was adding a scary clown behind. Don't judge me, I was in a bit of a weird mood. But here's the thing, when I made that selection around them, typed scary clown as my prompt and swapped out the image, it didn't add a scary clown at all, but it did kind of add a clown vibe to the photo. But I persisted and I got even more dark with my prompt. I wrote terrifying clown now. Getting really macabre on these poor kids. But I hit swap and what did I get? Just like a room behind them and almost like a yellow top hat on this girl. I went in again with a little bit more specificity. Scary clown face, Pennywise the clown. And this time I got clowns red hair. I just kept going, trying different things, trying different prompts. And finally I got a big scary clown head in the back with Pennywise the clown in the background horror theme. I then added out of focus, regenerated by pressing swap again. And this time I got these two scary clown characters hiding in the background. I then made a tighter selection in this area where there was no clown and got this weird guy. The crazy thing is I don't even like horror, so I don't know why I went down this tangent. But anyway, just so you don't think I'm a complete weirdo, I did try it on some more standard photos. So let me show you some of those other results that I got as well. This is a photo I used in a previous video where I removed some other cows from the background using gen arrays. And this time I decided I wanted to change my cow's head to see what he looked like if he was actually a pig hybrid thing. So I typed pig's head in the prompt and there you go, we ended up with a relatively realistic cow-pig hybrid. As I said, if you're not happy with the results, you can just generate other alternatives as I have done here and here. However, I was pretty happy with that first result. For this photo here, I was just playing around. I thought, what if our character had some crazy vines breaking through the concrete and wrapping around his legs? So that was the prompt that I was writing to generate these different photos here. And uh, the results were pretty mixed. I was never truly happy with the results I was getting, but this one here was about as close as I got. And this was when I actually added broken rubble to my prompt. And that actually started to create more of the look that I was after on the foreground here. You'll notice that although I'm just talking about vines wrapping around his legs, my selection actually goes wider and below. And the reason for that is you want to actually include the surrounding environment as well, so that if there are any reflections or the environment should be affected by what's going on in the photo itself, then the AI will actually be able to generate the pixels for that area as well. Like for example, in this version here, we can actually see the reflection of his legs down here and some weird stuff that's going on with the road as well. If you don't have these new generative AI tools, there are two ways to get them. Either you need to be a Luminar Neo subscriber and you'll have access to all of these tools, or if you already pre-own Luminar Neo, you can add the Creative Journey Pack and that allows you access to their servers and their tools and all the AI stuff that goes into this. So if you wanna check that out, I've got a link in the description below for whatever their best deal is at the moment. You have got Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that stuff coming up. So I'll make sure those deals are up to date via that link. So as I say, I've had a lot of fun playing around with this. Look at this prompt, aliens flying into New York City to attack the Earth with laser beams and explosions. Here's one result that the AI's generated for us. 
here's another one and as you can see from those two photos the interesting thing is I didn't change my mask I didn't change my prompt yet the results I got from the AI were quite different and that makes it a really kind of addictive thing to keep playing around with because you're continually tweaking things to see what you get and not only are you at the whim of the randomization of the AI the art of crafting a prompt is really important. Just tweaking those prompts slightly and also tweaking your mask slightly can really alter the results you're getting. There most certainly is an art to getting the most out of this gen swap tool and the nuances of how to use it and crafting a prompt I'm not going to go into in this initial video. I just wanted to share my excitement. It's by no means perfect yet. I think it's got a long way to go, but the possibilities that are open to us with it are yeah, just phenomenal. I've had so much fun playing around with this already and I think you will too. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and hopefully I can create a more in-depth video that looks at the nuances of how to get the most out of this tool. So if you want that, just let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Happy playing around with this. Have fun.